Video dedicated Grant. Grant, we miss you. Grant, we miss you. You have word problems in this unit. Test is on Tuesday or on Thursday, December 21st. Thursday, December 21st. Whatever we get through, we get through. Whatever we don't, we don't. You've already done those kind of problems. You'll see them again. You've already done those kind of problems. And you've already done those kind of problems. Uh, that will be new. That will be new. And that will be new. The goal is we eventually get to problems that you haven't seen before. And I don't even model them for you. And you can still do it. The idea is there comes a point where you say, Mr. Gens, I don't need you. You can go home. We can figure out all the problems on our own. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. Get me out of a job. Make me go find some other place, okay? Um, show me that you're against. We know how to solve any word problem that comes our way. That's what we want to see. Somebody once upon a time was at a graduation stage, and they said, what are the four numbers that add up to 80 that are all odd and they are consecutive? And uh, that was a good question. Um, math people were able to come up with it pretty quickly. It's just 17, 19, 21, and 23. Those are the ones that add up. Well, we'd like you to be able to write a formula for it, be able to work through that piece. Guess and check will not work on this test. I need to see you model an equation so we can get to more difficult things that you would never be able to guess and check for. Okay? And so if you want to write an expression for consecutive numbers, consecutive numbers are like 1, 2, 3, 4. I should really say consecutive integers, but that would be an example. If we're going to model that mathematically, we would have x. Anybody know what the next one would be? X plus, one. X plus one. X plus two. So on and so forth. Great. But then we have different ways of talking about numbers. So suppose we want to talk about the set of even numbers. What could you do to any number to make it even? Multiply by two. Multiply by two. So your evens will be 2x. What would be your next even number? 2x plus 2, because it's got to skip the odd, right? 2x plus 4, so on and so forth. Evens are every other, right? Suppose we have an even number, namely 2x. What could you do to 2x to make it odd? Subtract 1 or add 1, right? So odds would be 2x plus 1. 2x plus 3, 2x plus 5, so on and so forth. And those are examples of odds. So now when it asks us to find four consecutive odd integers whose sum is 80, it's no problem. We just take our odd numbers right there and we add them up. 2x plus 1, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 5, 2x plus 7 is equal to 80. I need an equation. You might have a slightly different one, and I could give you credit for it, but is, you cannot just guess and check. Okay? So, what do the x's add up to? 8x. 8x plus 16 is equal to 80. We just solve. Subtract 16, and we get 8x is equal to 64. We divide by 8, and we get x is 8. That's my answer. What do we got to do, Tyler? Plug it back in. Where? 2x plus 1, 2x plus 3. We drop 8 right into here. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 1 is 17. We drop it in the next spot. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 3 is 19, and so on and so forth, and you get those values. I don't want to sound smarter than what I actually am, you guys. When they said that it adds to 80, I just took 80 and divided by 4, and I got 20. And I said, well, we'll just go to both sides of 20 and come up with our pairs. It wasn't that big of a deal, right? Ben had the same idea. He just didn't want to say anything. No cap. Yeah, I'm okay. Not too bad, right? Okay, next one's different, isn't it? Sum of two consecutive squares. I'll just say, well, Gens, we haven't we haven't talked about like consecutive squares. Like, what does that look like? I had a uh, professor who once gave me uh, some of the best advice I ever received from a mathematician. 
he just affirmed something I kind of already knew. And I, I do, I, I use this with my, my kids at home, a daughter's off at college, we model this together. But he said this, he said, if you don't know how to do a problem, just do the problem. Awesome. <laughs> you like that, huh? Yeah. Now, yeah, now, Abby right now is like, that makes no sense. I don't find that very helpful, right? Yeah. Abby, can I, can I help you see it as helpful? Okay, you ready? Okay, because this is this is where you need to get. I actually would, would venture to say that this might be the most important element that I've used in my mathematical expertise. Like if there's one thing I could say, do this, this would be the one thing. I just want to see what that even looks like. Like give me two consecutive squares. What are two consecutive perfect squares? Four plus nine is 13. Those are consecutive squares, right? I want to get 613. So at least I know like what the consecutive squares are, but I, I don't have the right answer. Well, well give, me an, uh, give me another set. Four nine plus three A hundred plus 121 is equal to 221. So that, that ain't right either, but I got the idea, right? So let me just now try to take this and I try to write an equation for it. I'm, I'm noticing something. I'm going to rewrite this as, as 2 squared plus 3 squared. That would be this guy right here, right? And the other one would be 10 squared plus 11 squared. So if I'm going to add two consecutive squares, what would that look like? Uh, x squared plus x plus 1 squared. Good. You see it? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I get it doesn't happen all the time. But you see where my strategy started? I didn't, I didn't start with that. I was just like, I'll just try something. I'll just try a couple. So where do I get? And that's equal to 613. I know, I solved that. So x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 613. So 2x squared plus 2x. I'm going to subtract the 613 over, get minus 612 is equal to 0. And we can solve that by factoring, right? Anybody excited about factoring that? Now, the, the 612 kind of is like, yeah, right? And you say quadratic formula, like quadratic formula, 612, no way. What would be great if your teacher gave you like, I don't know, like some type of special equation that you like put in your calculator that would just spit out the answers to any quadratic at all. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be pretty cool. Who did that for you? Who entered it in their calculator? Raise your hand if you did it. You. Raise. So we got, awesome, we got four of you guys. Way to go, way to go, way to go. So. I'm going to give you one shot deal. None of the other classes got this. I'm going to help you enter it right now if you don't have it. All the other classes got to watch it online. We're a little bit ahead of time. Are you ready? Yes. You better be on the ball. Program, right here. Wait, I got it first try. Wait, I think I'm a genius. <laughs> Every program. Are we okay? You are going to make a new program. Go over to new. Press enter on create new. It is flashing an alphabet key. So it's going to grab the green letters that I have here. I'm going to use Q, A, U, Q, U, A, and D. And I'm going to press Enter. Find the Q, find the U, find the A, find the D. Uh-oh. Yes. Press Enter. It's already there. Oh, okay. You already got it, dude. It's already there. Ben Weber owned it before, did it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, or wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, we're ready for the next step, okay? We've got to get it to ask what A, B, C are, what A, B, and C are. So we want the command prompt. So to get prompt, we're going to go into our catalog. See how catalog is blue? So we got to press... We got to press second catalog. And then you're at the A's. You got to go all the way down the P's. If you press the letter P, which is your eight key, press the letter P, it'll bring you down on the P's. Then I'm going to scroll down to prompt. That's my prompt command. I want it to prompt for me the letters A, B, and C. So I go. Alpha A. Notice the green key gives you alpha. Then I do comma. Comma is right above the seven. Comma. Alpha B. Comma. Alpha C. And I press enter. Everybody okay there? Evie win. Evie, we got to get you some glasses, dog. Yeah. Okay. Got it? Um, All right. Now we got to enter a quadratic formula. We got negative B plus or minus squared B squared minus 40C over 2A, right? We're going to try to enter in a shorter way. And notice the most important part is really that discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, right? So I'm going to find out what the discriminant is. So I'm going to do b squared, so alpha b squared minus 4 alpha a alpha c. Don't press enter. Just pause right there. Everybody get b squared minus 4ac. Okay, we want to store that as our discriminant. We want to store it as our discriminant. The store key is right next to one. I press store. And I got that arrow. We're going to store that as your discriminant. So alpha D. Press enter. Now we would like our calculus if we just display the results of the quadratic formula. So these are the last two lines we need to do. And if something's wrong with your quadratic formula, it's probably because you didn't enter one of these last two lines correctly. Got to go back and look at it. But I want it to display, so I need to hit the display key. Go second catalog to get in your catalog. I hit D for display, D. And I go down to DISP. And I press enter. And we want to display the quadratic formula. I press parentheses. What is the quadratic formula? What does it start with? Negative B. So I go negative alpha B. We're going to have to do one line for the plus. We're going to have to do one line for the minus. So plus. The square root of what? Which we already stored as what letter? So we just need to write D. That's the top. Then I got to divide it by what? So parentheses 2 alpha A. What? Um, I'm going to edit what I already have. I'm going to go back down there. Um, alpha A. Make sure that your bottom is sitting in parentheses. Are we okay? And I do my last one. I do display, which again is second catalog. I grab D for display. I do the same thing except instead of plus, I just use minus. So negative alpha B minus 
the square root of D divided by 2A. And I press enter. That's a basic code. We got it? All right, let's execute it. Press quit. We want to put it to work. Press program. Notice you get to execute, edit, or do new. We want to execute the quadratic formula. Press enter on it. To get it started, press enter on program quad. It asks you for A. What's A in this problem? <laughs> One. Two. <laughs> What's B in this problem? I already factored up two. B in this problem is two. What is C in this problem? Negative 612. And it spits out your two answers, 17 and negative 18. <laughs> Girls, do you see it again? No. Watch, watch. No, but how do you save it? It automatically saves. Yep, you want to press quit. <laughs> Bummer. How would you guys got it? Program, enter, enter, A is 2, B is 2, and C is negative 612. Seventeen, negative eighteen. Okay, here we go. Now we get back to the problem. Okay, which one's the answer? Seventeen or negative eighteen or both? Seventeen. Neither one's the answer. We got to use them to find the answer. Okay, take seventeen. Plug it in. What's seventeen squared? It's 290. 289. Very nice job, Ben. Ah, yeah, that was important. I said 290. We plug in 17 here. 17 plus 1 is? 18. Squared is 324. Do those add to 613? Probably. Darn right they do, and they are consecutive. Watch. The negative 18. This is what's so. I, I love this about the mathematics. We take negative 18. Suppose we drop that in. What's negative 18 squared? 324. What's negative 18 plus 1? Negative 17 squared. Uh, 289. Like, math says, we, you never said where it's consecutive increasing or consecutive decreasing. You never said if you, which so type of solution you want. Like, it finds multiple ways of finding the answer. I mean, but yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I, I like how it does that. Okay. We do two more problems today. Right. Take your garden's perimeter at 288 feet. Anybody here got a garden? Well, we, we know. Is there, is there like a garden for the goats? Where they like. Um, how, how about this? Do you, do you have to make sure the goats don't get into the garden? Okay. How big does the fence have to be? Oh, wow. Okay. So we got serious. Okay. Wow. What is the largest thing you grow in the garden? What's the main source you grow in the garden? Tomatoes? Sunflowers. Okay. Gosh, I got to get going on that. I like that idea. Okay. We built a garden during COVID, like a lot of people. Okay, It says that the perimeter of this is 288 feet. It says that the length is four more than twice the width. It's one of the dimensions of the garden. You tell me, what do you do? Uh, you do uh, the width is X. Okay. You were going to say it? Probably right. How about we just there, there's three ways? There, how about I just say this is width and this is length? Can we start there? And it all adds up to what? 288? So I don't want two variables though. I, I, I mean, I don't want a W and an L. I'd like just a W or just an L. 
But it tells us that length is something. The length is what? Uh, four more than twice the width. What does that mean? What does that look like? What is that language? The width is x. Four. It's 2x plus Yeah, four. twice the width plus 4. Now, sometimes people say, I don't remember the formula for perimeter. You shouldn't ever have to remember a formula for perimeter, folks. You just add up everything, right? <laughs> you just add it all up, right? No formula needed. W plus 2W plus 4 plus W plus 2W plus 4. We just add them all up, right? How many Ws? 6W plus 8 is equal to 288. I subtract the 8, I get 6W is equal to 280. So W is? W equals 46 and 2 thirds. Or 46 and 8. Yeah. Feet. Yeah. 46 and 2 thirds feet. It's 46 feet, 8 inches. It is 8 inches, 2 thirds of foot. The length, you got to plug it back in. Uh, twice 46 and 2 thirds is going to be 93 and 1 third. Plus 4 is 97.3 repeating. 97.3. And we get to our very last problem of the day. And this one involves um, a little bit of, uh, I guess, insight to, uh, you know, a, a little visualization. Okay? And, and this is something that sometimes people really struggle with is visualizing. Anybody here really bad with maps? Okay, struggle with directions. Okay, thank you for your honesty. I find that people's ability to visualize is often very innate. Sometimes it makes a difference whether or not you like geometry or not. Some of you guys might be really gifted uh, in terms of visualization. But in this situation, we're, we're given a piece of cardboard, and we want to take that piece of cardboard, square, and we want to create a box out of it. Okay, you may ever buy a like an empty box at Home Depot, like you were moving or something, you had to buy a box. But you probably came flat, probably had it like folded. And so, you know, when people are making, you know, this, this type of construction, you're like, well, what kind of box should we make? Like, how should we make it so that when you fold it up, it has, you know, a good volume to it? That's a good question. So they ask mathematicians these these questions. But like your, like a can of pop is 12 ounces, right? You ever wonder why that can has a shape it is? Where he's like, well, it fits in your hand real nice. Well, no, that shape uses the minimum amount of aluminum to create a 12 ounce volume. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you agree that they want to use the minimum amount of aluminum when they're producing it? And that helps them save money, right? So suppose we want to do a similar situation. So, so we're going to cut from the corners a square. Each one of the corners, we're going to cut a square. Two, three, and then we've got four. Sweet. We got this shape. Don't hurt anybody. Okay. So then you take and you take the sides and you fold them up. Fold them up like so. So you fold them up. What shape do you have? Uh, uh, rectangular prism. Yeah, like a rectangular prism, otherwise known as a box, box. right? You can have it. This is a Christmas gift to you. Okay, and you can even store some things in it. No Give you back these, okay, and these, and these. Does it have a top to it? Does the box have a top? No. Nope, that's one downside, but easy to make, right? Like, easy to produce. So there we have it, okay? It says that the volume is going to be 100 inches cubed. It's wondering what size cardboard should we start with? How big of a piece of cardboard should we start with? So we start with a square piece of cardboard. We don't know the dimensions. We'll say it's x by x. But we do know we cut off how much from each corner. Four. Four. 
since we're calculating volume, we should probably write down a formula for volume. Volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. And this is where you got to get smart. What do I write for volume? 100. Here's where you got to get really smart. I don't want the length of the, of the piece of cardboard. What should I write for the length of the box? Just that section. Uh, that plus 8, right? Close. Minus eight, or minus x eight. minus 8, right? You're starting oh, yeah, with x. Just... You're subtracting out 4 from each side. So I have x minus 8. What's the width going to be? The same thing. Same thing. x minus 8. And the height? 4. 4. So you get 100 is equal to 4 times x minus 8 quantity squared. I divide both sides by 4, and I get 25 is equal to x minus 8 quantity squared. Now what? Yeah, just square up both sides. And we get plus or minus 5 is equal to x minus 8. Remember, plus or minus because you have a squared and you list both solutions. Add the 8 over, we get 8 plus or minus 5 is equal to x. Well, 8 plus 5 is 13, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So it's interesting. It produces two results. Let's see which one works. If we were to plug in 13 for x, and we were to cut 4 off from each side, what would you be left with? Uh, Start five. with 13, and I cut off 4 and 4 more, so I'd be left with 5, right? So it would be 5 by 5. Suppose you start with 3. Suppose you start with 3 to cut 4 off from each side. Can you do that? No. But what's interesting for math, they say, well, if you start with 3 and cut off 4 from each side, you'll end up with a side of negative 5 and of negative 5. Does that produce the same result? Negative 5 times 85 is 25 times 4 is 100. So in math, Math is not restricted to negative dimensions at all. Like it, it can work through the negative dimensions. In our world, we can't handle negative dimensions, can we? So in our situation, we say 13 is the only option, not three. This is a 13 inch by 13 inch box or uh, square that we use to start with. Good job. You are ready to start your homework. And in your homework, you would be ready to start problems one through seven. Should you do this in the uh, list of the problems that you're given, or should you use a separate sheet of paper? Um, if you are struggling to find a separate sheet of paper, stay after class. I will hunt down some scratch paper for you to use. If you need a staple to staple it, we'll find that too.